Alright, this is my brother's laptop. It's a Gateway NV79. And if you look closely right here, you'll notice that it is completely missing the power button. That's because one day he dropped it and the button fell off and the little board that turns it on and off kind of just disintegrated. So in this video what we're going to do is be adding an external power button to this laptop because all the power button really is is a momentary switch. So for this, I went to eBay and I purchased a small miniature momentary switch and it has positive and negative leads just as this does so theoretically all we'd have to do is connect this but I don't really like how, how that looks with those wires sitting around so what my plan is is I've also purchased some male and female three and a half millimeter headphone jacks so what I'd like to do is take this case off and find this is a CD drive obviously but maybe right here I want to drill a drill an extra hole and add the secondary jack sort of like a cleaner place to put it and then put the male end here on this cord so you'd sort of have like a little wiring harness because I didn't want to just simply drill a hole in the laptop and mount the switch because I didn't want it to get bumped around or put somewhere where it could accidentally turn the laptop off I didn't want it to be really rigid if that makes sense because I didn't want it to get bent or damaged even more than it already is so I think the first thing I'm going to do is continue taking the case off. Kind of already gotten started with the keyboard and such, so that's what I'm going to do now. Alright, so I've got the whole laptop disassembled. I've got the screen off and got the top case off uh, right here. Got the hard drive out, all that good stuff. And I was looking at the case. And I think that my original place will be best to drill this hole. It's going to go right uh, right here. This is hollow. This is the uh, modem jack, so that's not going to see any use anytime soon. And when I lay the top case here back over it, the closest thing, closest thing to where I'm wanting to go would be this right speaker. But I don't think they're going to have any issues, especially since the uh, speaker won't be making any sounds when we're... The switch will just have momentary power, and it won't be doing that while the speakers are active or anything like that. So I guess the next step is to uh, drill a hole here for this three and a half millimeter jack. Now I might drill it small enough at first uh, to see how I like just putting this switch on here because if that really looks like the right thing to do then I might just leave it at that but I'm obviously not going to be able to do the full installation right here because I don't have a soldering iron. So next step is going to be drilling holes. going to start small and work our way up to what we need. Alright, so I've got my quarter inch hole drilled and got my female jack here. As you can see, if I can get it situated right, fits right in there and then there's the little retaining ring that uh, threads on there to keep it from falling out. But now I'm at this part of the project that I have to say I am the least confident and familiar with because I've got to connect the positive and negative wires from the laptop power here to the eighth inch jack and then do the uh, positive and the negative wires from the switch which seems to be out of reach somewhere to this eighth inch male stereo jack and I'm gonna solder them but I uh, like I said, I'm not too familiar with how positive and negative goes into something that usually has left and right channels, so I'm just going to come back to you when I get it figured out. So this is definitely the part of the project where you take it on as your own risk, because just because it worked for me doesn't mean it will for you. The first step in the wiring or soldering process was to search the uh, wiring diagram. I have stereo plugs. You could also get mono, but I use stereo because that's what I found. So I googled a uh, TRS wiring diagram, tip ring sleeve, the one that I used as quarter inch, but uh, worked fine for the eighth inch, same thing. And my main goal for that was to see which sort of uh, lead on the mail connected to which peg for soldering. I'll call it a peg, the little area where you solder it on. And so as you can see in this picture, the tip goes to the shortest one, the ring goes to the middle one, and then the sleeve goes to the longest one. And I don't know if the order really matters. I think as long as you have a complete circuit, you're good to go. Like as long as your tip matches your tip on your female, then you're fine. So here's a picture of the 
wire soldered on. I soldered the red wire to the shortest tip peg and the black wire to the ring peg. The next step was to figure out which one of the pegs went to which part on the female jack and I bought 10 of these things so I had some spares and what I did is I just plugged a male and a female in together and I've got it highlighted here what I did. I looked at where I used the tip here as an example. I looked at where the contact point of the tip was on the same layer of metal as the soldering peg. As you can see here, they, they're, they're sort of connected, whereas on the other ones, say for the ring, the soldering peg will be up a little bit higher because there's little plastic dividers here. And so I looked until I found the ones that were the same and went for it, and it ended up turning out okay. This is my first attempt at soldering. It's not the final one I went with, but it worked in the picture. So that's how, it ended, that's how I ended up getting it soldered together. Here we're trying it out to see if it'll work. Our goal is for the blue LED here to come on as well as the fan to start spinning. So we're going to give it one tap. That shows that our power comes on just like it's supposed to, so we're good there. Now I'm going to hold it to simulate holding the power button like a hard power off. So one, two, three, four, and five. Laptop goes off just like it would with the normal power button. LED goes off. The fan quits spinning, so we're good. Alright, so I've got the laptop back together and remarkably I didn't end up with a single extra screw which tends to be common with this type of project. only part I have not put back on is this right hand hinge cover because it's damaged because this is where the laptop was originally uh, dropped. But if you look on the side, the only evidence of our modification is this fresh headphone jack here. I'm going to zoom back out. Get focused in. And the uh, bat laptop doesn't have a good battery. I've ordered a new battery, so it's plugged in on the other side over there. But we got our switch with the male end connected here. Button on the other end, and all we got to do is plug it in. And press the button. And she fires right up. Everything works as it should. And to turn it back off, all you've got to do is the same as pressing a power button, just press and hold the little momentary switch for about five seconds. And off she goes. So, this was a really interesting project. I enjoyed taking it on and I was really pleased at how it came out. I know it's kind of a departure from my normal kind of videos, but I'd say it turned out well. So, if you uh, ever need to add an extra power button to a computer, you can do it with this and a headphone jack. So, thanks for watching.